Hi and welcome to creating displacement transitions. In this tutorial we're going to go through all the tips and tricks you need to create gorgeous displacement transitions. Let's get started. I've got some beautiful flowers here. Drag that into a new comp. Call this translate. Okay, now to get started let's create a new layer and I'm going to add a gradient ramp to this. Then I'm going to posterize it and that's going to default to seven steps and that's going to be a nice way to drive our displacement. So let's call this our map. On our image let's add displace a pro and let's add the map. We can view that here. Currently we can't see anything and that's because it's set to source so we'll set it to effects and masks. Now let's just go ahead and do some translation. You'll see that in the default uh, mode which is displacement mode of standard the transformation is happening in two directions. And that's what we have here, map interpretation standard. So a value of 0.5 means there's no translation. A value of one means it's going 100% in one direction. And a value of zero means it's going 100% in the other direction. So that creates a cool effect, but sometimes for transitions, you want it to be not like that. So I'm gonna set it to legacy. And what legacy will do is it'll only move it in one direction. For our keyframes, let's set one, translate Y here and come forward and we want to push it at the first one all the way off screen. Now we don't want to go too far because that's going to be quite an extreme value. What we can actually do is come up to our map, add a levels adjustment. Now it's important you add it after the posterize. If you add it before, it's not going to do the same thing. And we just soften the edges so that they're not so extreme. So a starting value of 0.8, end value of 0.9. And that means we won't have to push the translate as far. If you come in here, you can see that um, the, the change that that's happening, it's pushing it out off screen and we want to push it all the way off screen but we'll get there a little bit with displacement offset so let's push that as far off screen as it needs to go and also keyframe that to make it nice and smooth okay doesn't look very good but we can fix that so the animation is really bunching up to the end and that's what we get with uh, linear interpolation. So I'm going to add exponential interpolation. If we have a look at the value that we're getting here in our speed graph, we can see we've got this beautiful S curve from ease and whiz. Uh, but you could use any, you could use your Bezier handles to do that or some other third party tools. Ease and whiz is free, so that's why I use it because I'm a cheapskate. That looks heaps better. Now what we want to do is essentially the inverse transition. So duplicate that and chuck in image B here. So to reverse this, we can grab all the keyframes and go keyframe assistant time reverse keyframes. If we preview that, it's kind of doing the same thing, but in the wrong direction. So instead of negative 400, we actually want to push that out to 400. If we preview that kind of, but not really. And the thing we need to change as well is we need to invert the map so that it's essentially the inverse. That looks good, but it doesn't push it all the way out. So we'll need to push that there and that's just because the white value here isn't exactly the same as the black value. Now let's look at it with both layers on together. Looking pretty good. Um, let's delay this one a bit so there's not so much black gap in between and we'll come to edge behavior and add a mirror repeat there. And We don't have any gaps. Actually I cannot do that. I need to offset the keyframes only not the layer itself. Nice. Okay, one more thing to do to add some polish. So we add a controller here, call it so it's a null layer, add some sliders, call this iterations, duplicate it, call it aberration. And let's come into hit E to get that on the timeline. And then in image B, come down to iterations and alt click the stopwatch to link that. And with the chromatic aberration for the red, what we will do is we will go value plus and then drag this to the aberration. And for the blue, it'll be value minus and drag that to the value. Then what we can do is come up to the controller, increase the aberration, say 0.1. You can see that there. And the iterations, I'm gonna to increase to 50. So we're getting some temporal motion blur and that just also allows us to get away with uh, a bit more chromatic aberration. Now let's propagate those changes uh, to the image A. So what we can do is with Displacer Pro, double click E so that we bring these up. Command click these to select all the values that we change the expression on and go edit, copy, and just paste them onto image A and that will propagate it to there. Now there's too much aberration happening at the start. So we can just keyframe that. 
from zero. So we want no aberration at the start and end. At the middle, we want it to be 0.1. And then we actually don't need iterations at the start or end. That's just gonna save on computation power. Aberration's happening too soon, so let's just drag that in. Oops, that's the iterations. And then once we get some actual motion blur happening, that's when we can add in a lot more chromatic aberration. Let's preview that. Gorgeous. All right, let's try another one. In this one, we're gonna do a rotation and we can leverage what we've already made. Duplicate that and let's start with image B. So we have our transition here, but for this one, for the map, let's, instead of using the default gradient ramp, I'm gonna add free gradient, which is a name your own price plugin from AE Scripts. And I find this is a very powerful plugin to generate maps, all kinds of different gradient maps very quickly. Let's change this to parametric and also to radial. I will set the center X to zero and zero and scale up the radius so that it fills the entire screen. Now we want to make sure that we don't have any values of exactly 0.5. So what I'll do there instead is set the posterize to maybe a value of six. And then we avoid exactly 0.5. Because the value of 0.5 we have it set to standard is not gonna move anything. Okay, so now we have a radial gradient and paired with the initial transition, that looks interesting, but that's not what we're going for. I don't want any translation, I just want rotation and I don't want to be rotating it about the middle. Let's set the anchor to zero, zero. So the same parametric values we used for the gradient. Let's also go into map adjustments and remove the displacement offset and change the map interpretation to standard. Now let's spin this around until we get all the pixels off the screen. So I think we can do that at a value of two and 270 degrees or 280, something like that. Let's keyframe that and come to the end and set it to zero. Oops, two spins to zero. Okay, now that's the linear motion. Let's apply ease and whiz to that. That's looking really nice and smooth. Now let's propagate this to image A and let's, oops, I was offset when I pasted it. So the keyframes got offset and let's also time reverse those keyframes. Turn on image A and let's see what we got. Now image B here, let's set this to mirror repeat. That's looking good except for the aberration up here, it's way too much. So let's come up to our controller and just see what's going on. Now, I think what we would need to do to give this a next level of polish is actually do a little bit of overscan. So something that doesn't look great is at the start, we can see all these edges, right? And you could just add a motion tile, um, but currently we're doing a 1200 by 1200 comp. Let's just say output resolution was 960 by 960. That would allow us to then say add a feathered mask to here and feather 50 pixels minus 50. And then if we came here and went rotate, put it to rotate and called it rotate output, that would allow us to then go down to 960 by 960 and have much softer, less noticeable edges. So if you wanted to give your transitions that next level of polish, I would definitely recommend that. And you don't even need the extra resolution. You can make it up with the motion tiled mirror repeated edges, um, but that is a bit of extra work. Now for our last magic trick, let's do one with noise. So duplicate the translate again. I'm gonna call this one noise. So our map, let's solo that here and I'm gonna command shift E to remove all effects and add fractal noise to that. Let's change this to spline, soft clamp, and contrast maybe 500. Now we want to transform this up because we don't want this much detail. And the larger we make it, the less hectic it's gonna be, but we do want the complexity up. Okay, that's, that's nice looking, kind of looks like marble. Now image B, let's solo this and view the map. This is currently inverted, I believe, that's fine. For this one, let's remove the displacement offset. Let's alt-click translate X and let's drag that to translate Y. So let's make the translate X the same as translate Y. 
and just see what happens. Okay, that's interesting. Kind of looks like oil slick gets a little bit too crazy as we go along. So the translation is a lot. Uh, let's set this to say just 100. Let's take off mirror repeat just for now. And if we wanted to get this completely off screen, what would we need to do? We need to push it a bit further, but we have, we're starting to get pretty extreme. So we can leverage displacement offset to push it off a little more. And actually, instead of legacy, I think it would look better if it was standard. We push it in both directions. Okay, but with standard, we've got to push this further. Okay, that's looking good. Let's put our mirror repeat back on. And let's get image A in. So just copy that, paste it. And for image A, again, time reverse those, turn it on. Whoa, so let's get mirror repeat off. And something that doesn't look so good at the end is we can kind of see that this is square. Um, let's change the displacement offset or change the gamma of the map itself. Okay, if the gamma is zero, it's just all being displaced by a uniform value. If we increase it, things get hectic. Maybe for this one, what we might want to do, can we add a motion tile to that and mirror it? Put that before Displacer Pro. Yes, we can. Now we probably don't need it to be 120. Let's do 110 and it's looking pretty good. I want some more, we can get away with more chromatic aberration in this one. So up to the controller, Let's move the chromatic aberration and let's crank it. 0.2. This one here, the gamma is definitely too much at the end. So maybe we set it to a value of 1.5. I think also the amount that it's translated is too much. It kind of seems like at the end it's it's still, it's still got too far to move. And so the way we could address that is not having it move as far off screen. So we do need it to move a fair amount to get rid of it, but we can increase the um, displacement offset to help us get it off the screen. And that means it's not going so far. That's how we can use noise to create some cool Displacement transitions, of course, play around with the fractal noise. It's got so many fun um, parameters. Like we, for example, we may want to set that to block. Let's see what that looks like. Create a very um, digital glitch. Looks like a deep fried meme, um, but that's pretty cool. So lots of things to play around with. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoy the transitions project file and using Displacer Pro version 1.5. Bye bye.